I should. So today is the 9th of 2018. <clears throat> and whenever we have a story, and this is, like I said, it's an ecological story, um, which means it's a story about how things are connected out there in the real world, in the live world, um, in the world of wild things, as somebody put it, wild things. I like that. So with any story, and you've, you've read lots of stories in English, and you've analyzed stories, and I think sometimes you start off with sort of a listing of the characters, don't you? I'm kind of thinking about the characters, and what are their motivations, and what are, what are they thinking, and what are they feeling, and why are they doing what they do, because that helps you understand the story. This is the same thing. This is just a story. So we're going to start off, as we would any story, by meeting the cast of characters. So, of course, you know, the title tells you all of it. Um, but I've got some nice little pictures. I've got the eastern white-tailed deer. And we started off talking about them. We started off watching a nice movie about deer. Um, pretty pictures, cute babies, beautiful bucks, nice scenery. Um, good stuff. And it gave us some information, but we're going to go into more specific information that pertains to our area, to, to eastern Ohio. Um, we've got the black-legged tick. And this is also sometimes known as the deer tick. You can call it by either name. They're, they're both common names, and we'll talk a little bit more about scientific versus common names. Um, when we use scientific names, there's less confusion because people, well, is a black-legged tick the same as a deer tick? Yeah but they're two common names that get used. Um, we have the white-footed mouse, which if that isn't cute, I don't know what is. Um, I had one of these living in a fish tank in my garage for a while when I was a kid. Um, they're adorable. They're delicate little things. They have this beautiful sort of reddish-brown upper coat and this creamy white little belly and little, you might guess, white feet. <sighs> Who would have thought? So a name like a white-footed mouse, and you'd expect that they're, you know... Brown. No, they're white. Um, and then we have, because we've talked about different species of bacteria before, we have this character. Borrelia burgdorferi. Huh? Borrelia burgdorferi. What kind of organism do you think that is? What does it look like to you? Fish? Fish? Oh. Interesting. I would have gone with bacteria right off the bat. And it is, in fact, a bacteria. So we've got Borrelia burgdorferi. Okay, so, well, we have until the boing boing happens on my uh, clock. So we're going to start off with the white tailed deer. Eastern white tail, Odocoilus virginianus. Woo, Odocoilus virginianus. I'll read this to you while you copy it, and then I'll shut up for a little while so you can copy. Um, and you know screenshotting is not the same as writing them down. I think you're screenshotting so that you can write, which is a wonderful strategy. I like it. The eastern white-tailed deer is Ohio's largest herbivore. There is no bigger vegetarian in the state of Ohio, other than some humans. It is highly adaptable. It's considered a generalist species. And it is able to eat just about any vegetation that you put in front of it. They have a 24-hour activity cycle, but their biggest periods of activity are dawn and dusk. They're dawn and dusk active, and that's a pattern of activity we call crepuscular, which I think is just such a fun word. I'm going to make you all say it with me. Um, not right this instant. You can copy for now. Um, they're found everywhere in Ohio, all 88 counties, downtown Cleveland. Yep, they got deer. Um, suburbs of Columbus, absolutely. Um, down to the, the most rural and wild parts of southeast Ohio, they have deer. They're everywhere in Ohio. And interestingly enough, they are susceptible to a huge number of parasites. That's why I said we could do a unit just on white tail diseases. So um, I listed just a few, ticks, fleas, biting flies, bot flies, blue tongue, chronic wasting, and I should swap out blue tongue and EAC for next year. Now I'll shut up while you copy. I'm going to go ahead and talk just a little bit. I want to talk, and I, I told you I would, I want to talk about this. That name. What kind of name is that? 
scientific, scientific name. Um, all living things on the planet have a two-part scientific name, and those two parts are the genus, which is kind of like the family name. Um, you may live in a house with other people who share your last name. The genus is shared by a number of different species. So, and I don't think there's anything else in the genus Odocoilus. There's nothing else that I know of. The other deer species, oh yeah, there is, key deer, duh, key deer Odocoilus, I think. Um, and then you have the species name. Boy, that's hard to read, isn't it? Um, and that species name is more specific, and only one species has the same first and last name. So we're going to see that for each of the four characters we're talking about, um, we're going to use both their common name and their scientific name. So I do expect you, I know pronouncing Latin is crazy and it looks insane to start with, but you'll get better at it. And it actually helps you pronounce lots of other words and learn vocabulary all over the place. Um, so Odocoilus virginianus is our friendly neighborhood whitetail. Now, I think...